Origins Day 3. Now, the Origins video for Day 2 kind of stopped during the day because last night was totally crazy. Just a lot of stuff going on. So just let me give you a synopsis of what happened there. We had the Big Dice Tower Dinner, which is what happens every year when the Dice Tower just invites anybody that wants to come out and they gather together at some location in the convention center and go out to a restaurant and eat together. So that's the way for a lot of the listeners of the Dice Tower to meet people like Tom and Eric and Z and so forth. It's just kind of a meet and greet sort of thing. So we did that last night. We go to a Japanese steakhouse and that was a, uh, a lot of fun and thanks to them for uh, putting that together. They had a big group go out there. It was cool to see all those guys going around and mingling with people and getting pictures with and people and such. And so afterwards, I uh, came back and actually got to try out the game Elysium. I'd been hearing a lot about this game and I wanted to get it to the table and give it a shot. It is a, a, it's a good game. Um, that's not, I'm sorry, that's part of our scale is and I shouldn't say that. It's a game that uh, it was very intriguing. It's an engine building game. It kind of reminds me of Deus where you're purchasing cards and there's abilities on the cards to generate resources and victory points. And it has that same sort of feel. So it's a, kind of an engine building game. I need to play it again. It's one of those things that I was always playing the game. I felt like I don't get what the big deal is. After I saw how the scoring works, it kind of clicked a little bit more, but I need to play it again. So I hope to get that to the table again. Then after that, Richard Launius came in and showed us Defenders of the Last Stand. We didn't get to play. Uh, he just wanted to set it up and kind of show us how the game worked and how the mechanics work. And that looks very interesting. And it's currently on Kickstarter. So if you want to go check that out, please do. And then after that, I was walking around and I, I ran across uh, Rodney Smith and some of the guys from Secret Cabal playing 1775. And that's a game I've always kind of been a little bit interested in too. So I kind of saw how that worked. And they finished up around 1230. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to head on back to bed and uh, so Jamie pulled out Spyfall and said has does anybody know how to play this game I picked it up but haven't tried it out yet well it so happened Rodney was off at that time teaching somebody else how to play a game and I said well I know how to play so pull it out and I'll, and I'll show you I'll sit and play around well if you ever played Spyfall you know you just can't play one round you're gonna end up playing more so after it was done I said well let me just play one more and then every time I wanted to get away from the table, no, just play one more. And next thing I know, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. So I crawled into bed around a little after 2 a.m. So that's why I didn't get to put together the nice little tag at the end because I was just beat and ready to go. So here we are, day three. And I just want to apologize for everybody for the shakiness of my videos. I got in a few comments, your, your videos are shaky. I know, because I'm holding a camera out here at arm's length or yes, with a selfie stick. Thank you to those who continually bash me about it, but it works. You'll see in the other video, I can get the, the long the long angles. And Okay, so anyway, so right now it's like, well, Marty, this is great what you're doing right now because it's not shaky at all. It's because I'm using a little table tripod. And I don't know, I could probably set that up anywhere, but when you're at the convention center, I don't feel like carrying around a tripod and the big camera and everything. So I'm just trying to keep this as simple as possible. So I apologize if I'm making anybody seasick with the videos. So what I want to start out with today is I am currently right now in the North Market. The North Market is one of those places that when anybody goes to Origins, they always talk about the North Market and how great it is. And it's just a place with a lot of little restaurants and little eateries that has a lot of local flavor to it, a lot of local food and, and uh, local markets. And so what I was going to do is just kind of walk around and show you some of the cool things that they have here and just so you can see what's so exciting about it. And I just love coming here this morning. I came here and had a waffle from a place called Taste of Belgium. Just one of the best waffles uh, you'll ever have. So let me show you some of the places that are in this place and why it's such a huge attraction when people come to Origins. Okay, let's just start here in the middle of the market. They have everything. They have flowers and, and gifts and cards, but the food is what's really unique here. Like there's a special place that makes tea and juice, uh, sushi, Thai, Indian food, Italian food, subs, the uh, the waffle places down there, just a basic pizza place. They have gourmet pretzels. They have these big old donuts that they have out here. There's a coffee place, obviously. They have a meat market where they have a local butcher uh, cutting up the meat. There's a place with just a place that sells spices. There's a place down there that sells hot sauce. 
One of the most favorite places around here is called Jenny's Ice Cream, which is known for its really good ice creams. Down there at the very end is the, the pretzel place. Other end of the market is a, is a fish market where you have fresh fish coming in here, so all the locals come here and get their fish. So it's not a place just necessarily for tourists. A lot of the locals come here to get their meats, their breads, their cheeses, some great food, a lot of different types of ethnic food. And you can come here multiple times a day and not eat the same thing twice. Just a lot of local flavor, really good prices. North Market, seriously, we, for any convention I've ever been to, you'll never find a better eating establishment. Okay, here we are, Friday afternoon, and look, I'm with the man himself, the Podfather, Stephen Bonifor. I'm uncomfortably close to him right now because he's got to have this on a stand, well, so it's he, like... Well, you know this little kissy thing, see? Uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, so, with Stronghold Games, he's is here near the front of the, uh, the vendor hall, prime location. There's people all around this place. I'm in the booth right now. He is buzzing like crazy. And you're buzzing why? What two games came out here at Origins that everybody's excited about? We have both Dark Moon and Lagrange flown in from Germany to be here at the show. Both of those games are on pre-order on my website. Yep. So it's so those are going to ship in a couple of weeks at a little discounted price, but I flew these games in so that we'd have them here at the show to premiere them. And Dark Moon, which you can see there behind us, has sold out. Be right with you guys. And we sponsored the official beer coaster of Origins, which is, oh, look at that. Oh, oh it even fits up in the, oh, wow. Oh, that's like, like that. magic. That's so, like it was planned. So I've been giving these out to everybody as we're doing it. Can we cut for a second? Yeah. Okay. You guys, you guys need me, right? Okay, sorry about that. No, that's all right. Yeah. He's a very busy guy. It's going to be like five or ten minutes. I don't want to I'll take your money first. If you He's like. going to take some people's money. So I will say this. So Dark Moon is a the, the BSG light game that was a print and play on Board Game Geek. And Steven picked it up and uh, they re-themed the game uh, to a full version of a game called, uh, or a full production game called Dark Moon. So that was a hit. Uh, it sold out first day. Uh, the other game that came out is a Euro game called Lagrange, and I'm sitting there looking over to my right because I see the stack that he brought. There's only eight copies left, and like you said, you can pre-order online and get a 30-35% discount. Uh, really good deal. Uh, that's the best thing about Stronghold Games is that when they announce a game, and they're announcing some other games coming out soon, uh, you can go out there, pre-order it, and get a fantastic deal on it. Okay. And we're back. And we're back. So, we're we doing the cool thing of Dark Moon. LaGrange. What's the other one? Oh, okay. So, I heard you talking about the Dark Moon. We sold out. BSG Express and all that kind of great stuff. If you like hidden trader games, man, mm -hmm. this is the hidden trader game to end all hidden trader games. So, I mean, highly recommend it. The dice mechanic in this game is so good. It keeps the, it keeps the trader really hidden if he wants it. And the, and the good guys look like bad guys all the time. So, it's just really interesting. Lagrange. We happen to have a few more left. It's only about six more copies or six, eight more copies here. Lagrange. The brilliance of this game. This is a, a midweight euro. You're not gonna be able to see some of the stuff on the back here. A midweight euro game. People call the very Stefan Feld like. There's a lot of ways to score your victory points. You're, you are farming in the Mediterranean. So I, I did this to bother Tom even more. He doesn't like trading in the Mediterranean. So now you're farming on the island of Mallorca in the Mediterranean, um, off the coast of uh, Spain. The card use in this game is what really makes it brilliant. Right. The cards can be used in four different ways depending on where you slot them on your player board. You put them on one side, they're your fields. You put them on another side, they're farm extensions. You put them on the bottom, they're helpers. And they'll, different parts of it are going to be showing as you place them in different places. And on the top, there are uh, market barrows to bring your, your goods to market. Okay. So you're farming, trying to get the most victory points via various mechanisms on the main board to win the game. Plays in about 90 minutes, one to four players. You can play the game solo. So really beautiful. I'm continuing my my, my conquering of the Euro world. And yeah. I, you know, it's not something that I normally even go to for myself. These games are just so good. And the motto, the, the, the principle here is always to bring the best games out yeah. for all gamers. So. Which and two big Euro hits last year with Kanban and Panama. Absolutely. So there's nothing wrong with establishing yourself with a nice little Euro niche there. Absolutely. I love it. No, no, and and, and the, the Euro gamers are just going crazy. They're all of a sudden, they like went like, whoa, what are you guys doing over there? So we're going to continue doing this. I mean, my relationship is with 
some of the great German publishers, and this is really that's their wheelhouse. So I'm going to keep playing those games with them and saying, yeah, this is brilliant. Let's bring this one over too. So that's where we are right now. Both Dark Moon and Lagrange, I said, we're on pre-order on the website. Uh, if you don't, if you don't want to do that, they'll be in retail, both of them, by the end of July, and we'll have them, of course, at Gen Con if you going to Gen Con. Right. And this week you had two big press releases we did, that we I did. went gaga over. Good. So why don't you go over those? Thank you for mentioning those. We did, yes, we press released both uh, the Golden Ages and Porta Nigra. Let's talk about the Golden Age first. This is a civ building game. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds like a war conflict thing. No, this is a Euro civ building game. There's a little bit of conflict in the game, but none of that like destroy things and you're gonna knock guys out of the game or anything like that. You're you're exploring, it's almost it's very 4X, but without like that really destruction kind of thing. You're exploring the world, tiles are getting played, and the world is getting built as you explore out. Occasionally there'll be some conflict, but in Euro style, nothing destroys permanently anything anything out there. You can rebuild and get things back out onto the board. Um, all card-based again, this is a card-based game with tile laying as well. Um, it was a big hit, very big hit at Essen last year by a small company in Italy, Ludo Editions. Mm -hmm. Ergo Ludo Editions. So we got the license from them. It took us a while to get it all together, but now we're printing it right now. Uh, we're going to have it. We might have some copies at Gen Con, and we'll definitely have it out for the end of the year for, for Essen again. Fantastic. And, and then now, we did Porta Nigra. Now this is a huge one. Now this one is by Kramer and Kiesling. We've done so many games today. Wolfgang Kramer and and Mikkel Kiesling. Um, this game has got 3D pieces. So you're going to be building Porta Nigra, which is the uh, the gate in in Germany. It was it came as far back as the second century is when this thing was founded mm -hmm. during the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be physically building stacks and stacks of these plastic towers in various places along the board. It is a, uh, a rondelle mechanic where you're moving your master builder around to take actions in a given location and make these buildings. Everybody's got the same set of cards to play with, so as you play a card, you do the actions that are on the cards. You have to maximize when you're going to play one card versus the other card. Mm -hmm. um, again, victory point based, very lovely streamlined neural mechanics by a great design team, and I'm putting it in my my Great Designer series is my first game in the Great Designer series. Man, that is so exciting. It has been a, 2014 was a whirlwind year. It was crazy. For Stronghold Games. And then we saw, except for Diamonds. I'm not crazy about Diamonds anymore over there, what happened to BGG. Con. Yeah, after you got killed by the ladies. Huh? Yeah, but other than that, no, it was a banner year, 2014. It it's like, how can they top it in 2015? And I think you're going to do it. It's, um, I actually promised myself uh, at the end of last year that I can't do this again. I can't, I can't have that many games coming out and be that busy and I basically did almost twice as many and, and as much money to it's going to be a crazy year with everything coming out with the new with Space Ed's Away missions right the 102 plastic miniatures in that game with the new version of Survive Survive Space Attack which yep. is going to be it's going to barn burn that game so with all of these things coming out and I got more things like Stronghold 2nd Edition I've got another announcement coming out I can't even talk about later sure. this year so yeah, it's another going to be another crazy year for me. So um, uh, just watch Strong Little Games. Watch what we're doing. I think yep. you're going to like it if you stick with us and just follow us on Twitter and then hang out on uh, the website. And exactly. Stay Re with us. Regardless of what genre game you like, whether it be Euro, Ameritrash, uh, whatever, they have it. Again, they have the best pre-order program in the business. We're talking 30... Keep going. We're, <laughs> we're going to... We're talking, was it 35% off on the pre-order? 30% 30, 30, 30, 30 off all pre-orders. So when he announces a game, go out there, pre-order it. You won't find it any cheaper. If you're going to be at Gen Con, he's got some stuff coming out there and more stuff coming out later in the year. Exciting year for Stronghold Games. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay, here we are kind of end at the end of the day three before the hall closes in a couple hours. I'm sitting here with Pete Shirey from Asmodee Games. Hey, how who, you doing guys? Who has been here for several days teaching all these wonderful new games that's come out from, by Asmodee. Now Asmodee has a lots of games, but yes. we're gonna focus on ones that were either coming here out at Origins or just recently released. So, Pete, which one you wanna start with? Well, why don't we start with Metal Adventures. Metal Adventures is a great pirate-themed space combat game where you're gonna go around doing missions for a corporation you're going to ally with friends, you're going to backstab your friends, you're going to do a little deduction, and 
in order to earn victory points to win the game. You're trying to gain glory, and one of the coolest things about Metal Adventures is this dial. This dial is off the charts. Take a look at it. You can track your ship's power and your assist, your ability to ally with your friends. You can check your ship's infamy, how much you backstab your friends, and how much it affects your your glory total. You track your glory here. I mean, this dial is ridiculous, and it is one of the most cool game components we've seen at Origins so far today. Do you have to have an engineering degree to assemble that thing? Um, it wouldn't hurt, but okay. if I could do it, I'm sure you guys could do it too. Okay, because that, lo that looks pretty technical, and this is one of the things that, that stands out, but what, what type of game is it? What would you, I mean, how's the game I would categorize work? this as a bluff deduction game hmm. that has a little bit of resource management and a little bit of luck because you are rolling dice in combat. Okay. Um, but it's got a little bit of everything, but it plays really well. And surprisingly, you can play the game in about 60 to 90 minutes, up to six players. And it gives you that good feel of a deep space game. And you can still kind of backstab your friends when you want to. So, Okay, what's next? Well, we're going to go from the deep space pirate theme to the elegant perfume shops in well, France. Well, that's a natural transition. Absolutely. Space pirates don't smell that good. Now they do. <laughs> this is Parfum. This is by Queen Games. And this is a game about building fragrances and selling them to merchants. And you're going to roll dice to acquire the different fragrances, and you're going to use water to help manipulate the dice, whether it's re-rolling or changing die faces. And then you're going to use those fragrances during a sell phase to sell them to merchants for victory points. You're going to play through a set amount of rounds. It's got a, a token in a stack that you'll get to to trigger the end of game. And at the end of the game, whoever sold the most fragrances for the most money wins the game. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. It is, and it's it got really great components. The dice are gorgeous. You can get a look here at some of the components here. Got some really nice etched dice and some really good tiles, and the, the board looks great. And it's a double-sided board, so if you're playing with three players, you flip it to one side. If you're doing four players, you flip to the other. That's cool. I actually like the, uh, I, I know the, the theme is a different kind of theme. I think it sounds kind of cool. It and does. A, I mean, the only way it could be better if it was like crafting beer. But other than that, that we, we already have a game for that, though. We do have a game for that. So but we, we this is a great on that game. One. Fantastic. And while not a brand new game, a newer game from you guys is Elysium. Now, I would love to show you a box of Elysium, but we're sold out. Two days. It didn't take long. But Elysium is a great, great strategic game about using the powers of the gods to be able to manipulate and create legends and we've had nothing but positive responses about Elysium. It's sold out within 48 hours of Origins opening and it's just been getting such a positive view. We've even sold out of our demo copies. I mean, it's great. Check it out. There's plenty of great instructional videos out there from like Rodney and the Dice Tower guys. It is a phenomenal game. You guys will love it. And if you can get your hands on a copy, get it because it's that good. Yeah, in fact, the first games that I saw being carried under their arms, being purchased on the first day here was Elysium. Absolutely. Now, one reason why is because you were giving away this really cool play mat. Yes. With every purchase that came with the mat. Now, again, this was a specifically for Origins, so Correct. that was nothing help push it off the shelves, but I, I saw so many people walking around mm -hmm. with a box under one arm and then the long cardboard container with the Absolutely. mat there with it, too. Yeah, and it, I mean, you don't need the play mat to play. It just makes it look a little nicer on the table and helps you organize the cards, but the game plays just fine without the mat, and it's a phenomenal game. I absolutely recommend checking it out. Yeah, it's definitely one of those games that at the end of the con, if I was to say what's for the top games at the con, at least it would definitely be on that Absolutely. list. Absolutely. And this Parfum is actually a pretty close second, so yep. this is doing really well. We'll probably be sold out of this by tomorrow or Saturday, maybe late in the evening. Now, if, uh, if, if Elysium's gone here, but it's still out in the store, it's going to be picked Absolutely. up. Absolutely. It's already a retail. These are being released at Origins, Metal, Metal Adventures and Parfum. They should be hitting retail shelves very soon. Within between now and Gen Con, you'll be able to buy them at your local retailers. Fantastic. So look for those three games from Asmodee, probably a lot and a lot of other great stuff coming out from them in the future. And Pete, thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Thanks thanks for having me and we look forward to seeing you guys at the booth. This was one of the games that I have been very excited about to try when I got here. I knew that we were going to have our first look at Ashes from Flat Hat Games and designer Isaac Vega here at the show. And I just got done uh, demoing the game uh, with Isaac showing us how to play it and let me just tell you my mind is blown this game is more than what I wanted it to be so instead of having to 
geekasm over this thing. Just, <laughs> one, Isaac, why don't you just tell us about this game and your ideas behind this game and basically what type of game it is. Yeah, no problem. Well, Ashes is a LCD kind of uh, um, expandable card game format. Um, you are playing the role of the Phoenix Born, in which you are trying to destroy the other Phoenix Borns in order to collect their ashes and gain more power. So you're going to be taking on the role of these powerful demigods um, by using different resources. Uh, you're going to have interesting spells in your deck. You're going to have these conjurations and different units that you can spawn onto your board. You're going to have these awesome unique dice that you can use in order um, to use those cards. They're going to act as your resources throughout the game. And you're going to be having this cool back and forth action throughout the game as well. What makes Ashes pretty unique is that it really provides you an opportunity to start the game running. You get to start with five cards of your choice um, in your hands at the beginning of the game. That really lets your strategy work out. Yeah, so everybody knows who listens to our show and everything. Uh, Tony and I are big into LCG, so we like the CCG-ish type game, the LCG-ish type game. And there is that, with a lot of those games, this, this slow build. I mean, just take Magic, for example. You start out with basically maybe, you know, one mana and then two mana. So you get the small guys out and it builds up to a bigger game. Like Isaac said, this works because you can take the five guys that you uh, want to, to kind of get your strategy going, your engine going, and start out with it immediately. Our first turn took quite a while. Of course, we were learning it. But a lot of stuff happened in that first turn because we were directly in the game. It wasn't like... Okay, here's a card, nothing else I can do, your turn. Back and forth a few rounds before we could do something. Right. We had stuff on the table, we were attacking each other first round. Right. And what's cool about that too is that you still built up your spell board, which provides you more options for the next round as well. Right. So it, it gives you that build up, uh, but it doesn't sacrifice you having to wait back and uh, continuously, continuously wait until actually something happens. You can just start the ground running and it still gives you that build up throughout the day. Right. Now, there was a dice mechanic in here that I was kind of concerned about, where the dice that you roll has icons on them. Those icons are spent to as, as part of your resource pool. Anytime there's dice in, in the game, I kind of worry, uh-oh, there's some luck i got to deal with. But the game is designed to mitigate the luck of that dice. There are mechanisms where you can change the face of the die to what you need it to with some sort of cost to you. Right. But I'm cool with that. So it's like, you know what? I really need this dice to be this face. I'll pay this whatever cost it is, typically discarding cards, exactly, uh, in order to be able to get it what I need. So I think that's another cool mechanic. So don't let the dice pool scare you away. Right. Rolling all the dice is a lot of fun, but you can mitigate any sort of bad luck you might get from your rolls. Right. You always have the option to meditate, which you can go ahead and change uh, different dice faces by discarding cards. And you can also deck build different cards into your deck as well that also let you change multiple dice faces. That's right. And um, he said there was going to be, when you construct a deck, it's 30 cards, men max. Right. So it's not like you need to spend forever trying to get 50 or 60 cards to work together. Right. You're limited to 30, so that's good. And what's also awesome kind of cool, too, is there's all these different colored dice. And these dice are used, for again, for bringing out your units, getting out spells. You handpick which 10 dice you want in exactly. your pool. It's not like, okay, with this particular Phoenix Born, you use these dice. Right. You pick and match what you need and for the, the rolls and everything for that deck that you just built. Yeah, there's tons of different co customization opportunities in here. You can really craft these, these six different characters that you get in the box to your own play style. So there's lots of opportunities to create things that oh, no. no one else has ever seen before. Oh, no. And it's going to be a lot of fun, different interesting combos all in one box. And last thing is, you've seen pictures of this. And everybody's going gaga over the art. I've seen, this is the final this production This is the final product. production product. Absolutely gorgeous. The stuff that you see in the pictures does not do it justice. You need to see and feel these cards and see the all of these cards because it just pops. Everybody that walked around this table and saw these cards were going crazy over this yes. art. Yeah, so the final production turned out immensely gorgeous. Fernanda Suarez, again, hit it out of the park. She does an amazing job and we work together so well. She is really hitting it out of the park as well. Right now, you can go to platthatgames.com, I think, yes. and you can pre-order this game for a discount price. Right, it's only $34.95, and you get a seventh character, Demona Odin Sarparma, with her own special new cards as well. Yep. Right after this video is done, I am going to get my phone out, I'm going to the website, and I'm pre-ordering right now. If you have any interest in a deck building game, a pre-constructed deck game, that's a lot of fun. It plays two to four players, too. Correct. It plays two to four players. You know, we can either play multiplayer all, all against each other as well, and you can also draft out of it as well.
I saw there's an article right now that you have on your draft rules and draft mechanics, right. which adds a whole new element to the game. $35, go pre-order this game. This game's going to be around for a while. You have expansions ideas? Yes, yeah, so we already have two expansions um, going into play testing. We're expecting them to be out in about three or four months after release. Fantastic. And speaking of release, when is the base game going to be available? Um, it should, it's on its schedule to be at Gen Con this year. Fantastic. Isaac, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Marty, for having me. Ashes, you got to go check this game out. Mind-blowing. I am at the annual Secret Cabal meetup on Bar 2. Bar on 2. Bar at 2. Bar. It's a bar in the uh, Hyatt where they have this big meetup every year. And you've heard, you've heard, probably heard on their show and stuff, it's a pretty big deal. So I was just going to show you what it kind of looks like. So we got people kind of all over the place here. All around the bar. They're here for socializing. They want to meet the guys. Uh, which is really kind of cool. Just get together, hang out. There's going to be some uh, games that are given away that uh, getting ready to do pretty soon. So if you ever come out to Origins, this is a pretty big deal. All day long, people ask me, hey, are you going to be at the meetup tonight? So it's a great place just to kind of hang out and meet people. So if you come to Origins, it's a place you want to be on, I think it's Friday night every year at 9 o'clock.